is the all-new BMW iX with a huge double kitten in the front. <laughs> yeah, there's a very special feature that to come. This one here has also the option of this Titan bronze look, so this color nuances that are also continued all over the vehicle. The headlamps, standard LED, optional, which you can also see here, the laser lights with extended high beam function and definitely a very strong stance here in the front for the all-new iX. And the fill-in for the wiper fluid is right here underneath the logo. The length is at 4 meters 95 or 195 inches, so it has the length of a BMW X5, it is as flat as a BMW X6 and has the wheels of the BMW X7 and these are the optional 22 inch wheels, really massive. Comes standard already with 20 inch wheels, then optional 21, also included in the sports package, which is also here equipped with this vehicle with some sporty accentuations and then optional, the biggest ones right here. And suspension wise, a base iX would come with a steel suspension. An option, you can get the air suspension here on both axles. At the moment, the bigger battery is already combined with that one, but later on it will also be ava available with the big battery, but then we'll go for the base suspension. And also rear axle steering that reduces the turning circle by about a meter because then the rear wheels are turning in the opposite direction in the front wheels that gives you more agility, fake, so to speak, a shorter wheelbase. In the rear, we can see a very clean design. The tail lamps are very, very slim right there. And it doesn't look that bulky because, again, I said this recess, which is there also for wind efficiency. As for the acceleration figures, the entry model is at 6.1 seconds, the X-Drive 40, and here the X-Drive 50. This is the one with the bigger battery already. Acceleration figures are one kilometers or 62 miles an hour, 4.6 seconds. Dual motors, of course, front and rear already quite powerful. And here is a comparison. We have the iX in white just as it appears outside. It's always good to see the different colors than really you know, in, in real daytime light. Or what about a blue one here also with a roof box and a bike carrier at the rear. And here I have one cell module. This is 0.2 kilowatts. And interesting is then 500 of these are packed here in the battery pack. So 0.2 times 500 is then the 105 kilowatt hour battery for the bigger model. So something around 600 kilometers or 370 miles is the official figure. Will we reach that? We will try exactly that today in the driving part. There is also a smaller battery for the smaller model at 71 kilowatt hours. This one somewhere than 400 kilometers, 250 miles. Of course, a little bit cheaper. The price difference is around 20,000 euros, so at least 100,000 euros or dollars than for the bigger model X Drive 50. And recharging, wow, that thing is huge. <laughs> 11 kilowatt AC and 150 kilowatt DC for the small battery, and here for the big battery, 195 kilowatt. And now I have the official permission to damage a double kidney of a BMW. Why? I show you right here. Really visible scratch, and then the hairdryer action. And it's gone. You can actually just open the vehicle with your smartphone and then just approach it and it's basically automatically open. And then door closing sound is, yeah, it's frameless door, so it's not that sophisticated actually. Yeah, we know you can use your smartphone as a key, but I would rather stick with the classic key fob. It looks quite fancy and it's also pretty light. Then instead of the doors, here with microfiber, so it's really cool and very soft. Then these seat controls are at the inside of the doors. We know it from Mercedes that here they are still, you know, movable, so you have kind of feedback. Um, it's not the most practical thing. It's, I think it's rather practical to have it at, you know, the lower part of the seat. And also there are reflections. This looks cool from the crystalline layout, but when the sun is coming, you know, from the outside, it can blind you while driving, so that's actually not that good. But gladly, the crystalline applications are an option. So this is how it would look from the base model. It looks also quite stylish and elegant. And I would really recommend to stick with these because they are not blinding you. So the other one look more fancy something, you know, but these ones are definitely more practical. And then here in this seam here, we have a mix of fabric 
and microfiber and there's also 15% wool share in there. Not sure why this was really necessary because you could have also just made it completely animal free for this just 15% yeah doesn't make so much sense. And here a detailed portrait of the interior spec with the Oyster Sensitec seats. Here you have a bright insert of the doors. Then also these standard buttons which are not glaring. Then they kept the dark dashboard because this is not reflecting in the windscreen. Although they say yeah a bright dashboard would look cool but it's just too glaring definitely. And then the Sensitec seats so animal free here and the asymmetric shape and also perforated ventilation is possible and the quality is also really really high so no one could actually tell if it's animal source or not but these ones here of course less co2 emissions less harm of animals and of humans so this is also way to go then and the cool thing is seats as shown here are standard equipment for the bmw ix alternatively without any extra price you can get these sensor tech seats also in brown or black perforated again and then as an option each the ventilation for the steering wheel however they do not offer any animal skin alternative yet seating position nice upright very comfortable steering wheel up and down in and out electric control and you have a very good panoramic view to the front really open space atmosphere that's the main difference for example to an x5 x6 x7 this cockpit layout interior overview really unique styling definitely looks like from a concert vehicle but it's able you know to drive and to be bought right now the screen's 14.9 on the right side 12.3 inch on the left side and this you know kind of like free floating middle console and also the steering wheel so everything really with a unique setup i think they've done a good job to have a differentiation here on the market and what about the ambient lighting well they didn't put too much in the central part it's rather at the sides you see here the speakers inside of the doors also here at the rear at the inside of the doors at the rear it's even more actually you can see here this light strip here at the inside window also has a reflection in the glass that's actually quite fancy wow that looks really cool let's take a look at the driver's side there are the same things are happening and also here in the rear so uh, nice new ideas definitely but what about you i mean i would have wished something more ambient lighting not only in the floor right there but also you know in the top part somewhere you know but but what's your take on that these are infrared sensors here they are visible for the camera but not for the human eye interesting here that these displays this you know how it normally looks and then you can also change things here for example you can change the whole layout so this is possible like this or like this or then the contents here so for example you can have um, you know like range or here then gps view in it overall you get along with that quite well and head up display i picked a place here where you can also see the visualization of the map guidance so it's a very nice option especially then when you see some gps guidance there as for the infotainment system os8 operating system 8 <sighs> yeah hmm I don't know. I mean, it looks fancy, definitely. This is the map. This looks kind of familiar for BMW. Um, and you also have another main menu. You can access it right here. But from the looks, this is more like 90s, isn't it? You know, like it's like, I don't know, like Windows 95. <laughs> Sorry about that, BMW uh, OS engineers, but it's true, isn't it? Tell me in the comments. Hmm, and I think overall it's not such an easy system to get along with. I think it is more complicated than the system you had before. I really love the OS 7, I think it was also better than OS 6, but this one here I think is a step backwards. It has more functionality, at the same time it's more complicated. CarPlay integration is really cool all over the screen right here. And then let's listen to this optional Bowers and Wilkins sound system. Wow, yeah, that's really crystal clear and you know, there's a very big resonance room here definitely with the, with the vehicle. So that's definitely very cool. Here, the camera cleaning function, you have to have the doors closed and the ignition on and then you can clean front, rear or both cameras at the same time and that looks amazing. Yes, that's the cleaning function of the front camera and 
you saw how it comes out. Yep, and that rear wiping function looked even more spectacular, didn't it? Pretty cool that you have this open middle console here in the front. So there's uh, yeah, transition here, for example, for your suction mounts. <laughs> and then we have cup holes. They're also adaptive here in the front. And you can put a smartphone actually then up here. No, it doesn't fall through because they're being kept right here. And then this top console, also this you know crystalline turning and pressing knob. It's good to have that because then you don't have to do everything by a touch while driving. To change the driving modes, it's like here, these are like capacitive buttons, but inside the matte wood. That's a cool idea. It's better than the, you know, fingerprint thing with the um, high gloss black. But still, to get to this point here while driving is a little bit distracting. And here, there you can see what I mean. This is not only on camera, it does blind you definitely and the same happens with the inside of the doors with these um, controls for the seats so it looks super fancy and i mean it also looks amazing when it's blinding by the light here but then again while driving not that pleasant so you do not get the crystalline lever right there which is also in a way better because it's less blinding the only thing is you do not get the nice matte wood underlay for that so this of course is more this high loss back thing doesn't look that fancy but still no glare would be priority one for me and then we have the electrochromatic sunroof which is really amazing look at that this is then looking through and this is then for more sun covering wow really amazing and when you look through it and the sun is behind it then it looks like in dune you know like with this you know very uh, yellowish um, perspective on the sun and so on so yeah the kids will love to play around with that here there's the, the button up top there magic and here we go there's the sun through the panoramic roof and then let's make it arrakis Ooh. and plenty of space here in the rear a lot of leg room headroom also really a lot so remember this one here is flatter than the bmw x6 it's almost comparable in length, uh, you know, with the X5. But I mean, so much space. This is really using this EV platform. And of course, also on the middle seat, five tall adults, no problem. There is no trunk and the trunk has 500 up to 1,750 liters. See here the height for backpacks, no problem. You can, of course, also remove the whole thing just with a little <laughs> force. Then let's put it out like this. The length here at a meter or 40 inches here with my nice new black ruler and here you can see the width is more than a meter or 40 inches so um yeah it's like one meters five or like uh 41 42 inches so that's actually really good the height then here to the cover 45 47 centimeters or 19 inches agile driving first before the regular driving lounge, let's go. Woo, that was zero to 60 kilometers an hour. Wow, that went quick. Super powerful here, this X-Drive 50 version. Yeah, a lot of fun and also very direct steering here. And the batteries in the lower part of the vehicle centralized as we saw earlier. This brings a lot of agility plus the rear axle steering. So the car feels smaller and more agile and lighter than it actually is. That acceleration was even uphill, so even more impressive. And now even more uphill performance and agile driving. We're driving up the Obersalzberg. Yes, the Obersalzberg, where Hitler had his Berghof. And well, this region luckily turned from terror to tourism and from pain to pleasure because it's such a beautiful area and they also have a documentation center right here to uh, show you know what has happened and of course that this never happens again so we can go out enjoy some car reviews so here we go great agile driving wow due to the rear axis steering it really feels more agile and this is also a main difference then to the combustion engine brothers like the BMW X5, X6, X7. Due to the low center of gravity this feels so much more agile. It doesn't feel like a full-size SUV almost and wow having so much fun would never have 
so much agile driving fun here in a combustion engine SUV at that size. This is really, <laughs> these tires are also hooking up so great. I mean, it's huge and it feels and drives like a go-kart and has always more power. And this is also a major difference to a Tesla Model X. This one here is so much better in the agile driving. Yes, the Tesla has other big advantages, definitely. And we also have, an, of course, an extensive review of that. But in the agile driving fun, wow, this one is probably now king of the big SUVs. But there's more, so much more to tell you about this vehicle in the normal Thomas's driving lounge. And you can already see here, camera image and we have the augmented reality function so the arrows then that are showing me where to take the next exit and the turn and so on and the first thing that comes to your mind is it's extremely silent in here so we were skeptical before because there's no dual insulation glass at the side but indeed that doesn't seem to matter it's extremely silent in here and probably the most silent drive in an BMW car overall yet and they are very well insulated you know so this is extremely impressive how silent this vehicle is um, yeah I mean we'll soon also drive a little bit faster on the motorway German Autobahn and see how that one turns out the augmented reality aero functions we've already seen there are also quite promising already and here at a speed of about 70 kilometers now so like you know 40 miles now or something once again, great noise insulation and a super calm atmosphere. Indeed, this car here has a completely different atmosphere. It's nothing like you know from BMW before. This is really this open space. You have a traveling feeling, but it's not that it's like too long in the front. You have the upright seating position, very comfortable. Also here on these, you know, fabric microfiber mix seats. By the way, first, consumption average at the moment at 17 kilowatt hours on one kilometer so that's 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles and considering the big battery of 105 kilowatt hours that would indeed come to the you know close to the official figure of 600 kilometers or 370 miles of range very interesting and now acceleration from 90 kilometers an hour let's go Top speed, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, electronically limited, and that went super quick. Yeah, at 190 kilometers an hour, it kind of slowed down, but other than that, wow, this is like, oh, and the current consumption figure is like close to 50 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers, so that would be, that would mean straight road, I could drive, yeah, it's very interesting. I could like, drive like 200 kilometers or 125 miles with top speed 200 kilometers or 125. That's interesting. It would really mean I could drive 200 kilometers an hour for 200 kilometers or 125 miles an hour for 125 miles. Interesting. That's not even, I mean, it's hard to see, you know, like when the road is going a little bit down there, that already changes the effect and so on. But that's still actually a quite decent result and also the result I stated before. So we had it a lot that with the German premium manufacturers, their electric vehicles were not that efficient. But the Mercedes EQS recently showed otherwise. The EQE will also be quite efficient then. And here the BMW iX so far also makes a, makes a very efficient impression. and. It also has, um, you know, it doesn't have a high wind resistance and the reason is also because the roof is falling down a little bit and also from the rear it's going like, like this and this reduces the wind resistance and here, I mean, noise insulation wise again, at about 150 kilometers an hour, it's like nothing, you know, it feels like I would be driving slowly through the city, 160 kilometers an hour now only in Germany where you then still get overtaken with 160 kilometers an hour. Um, this is amazing. I mean, wow. This is like, you know, we're here at like at 100 miles per hour and there's hardly any wind noise picking up and the car is so stable. Here, sports mode here, adaptive air suspension, 
Now I'm getting on the brakes, by the way, but there's first all the recuperation being used and then the brakes, you know. So even if you hit the brake pedal first, they use all the regeneration. And that's also the reason why the brake disc, showing you that on the outside, are super small for a vehicle of that size, actually. Um, yeah, really impressed now. And even if you are at speed, you can still, now at 130 kilometers an hour, you know, so like 70, 80 miles an hour, and bam, there's still such a harsh acceleration possible. And once again, top speed. Wow, super impressed by that. And here at 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, there's not even harsh wind noise. I mean, how did they do that? And also without the dual insulation glass. Now, hard and regeneration. They have the figure, oh, there's the Alpina XD4. So BMW X4 is Alpina tuned version, but yeah, that's kind of like the old tuning system. This one is the new one. And we can, I think, easily keep up with that one, you know, acceleration wise. Wow. I mean, recuperation figure, by the way, here, 200 kilowatt. So you can very quickly recharge, to recharge this car with going down a hill or hammering the brakes then. This is also pretty impressive, of course. And here, I think the sound uh, connection here from this Hans Zimmer sound design really helps you also to, to get some, something of a connection to the vehicle, you know? But at the same time, told you, you can also cancel that. And another range test from different environment, like slower motorway driving, like 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, and countryside driving, mainly countryside driving with some 70, 80 kilometers an hour, so like 50 miles an hour. And this one results here in 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, so like something 30 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. This then means some 550 kilometers of range or some 350 miles of range. And now compare our reviews of the Tesla Model X or of the Audi e-tron SUV.